Common Thread, the official podcast of the Howard Thurman Center for Common Ground. I'm Amanda Dowd. I'm Greg Wilson. I'm Tarif Ahmed. And we have a couple of special guests on today. So we have Will Clapp. He's a regular over at WTBU. Hi, Will. Hello. And we also have Howard DePass. He's a Posse scholar, and he's currently studying abroad in London. We're Skyping him in. How are you, Howard? I'm fine. How's everybody doing? We're good. Good. So we're going to be talking about Obama's recent re-election today um, and how people abroad feel about it. So that's why we have Howard and Will here. Um, so just to start off, Howard, can you tell me a little bit about how people reacted in London when Obama was immediately re-elected? Sure, sure. Um, most, most people who I encountered over here... Uh, really responded well when he when he got elected. A lot of people were really standing behind him prior to knowing the results of the election. And um, on election day, uh, everyone on the, the BU London campus obviously knew about it. And um, since it's all American students who are here participating in the programs, uh, of course, those who were in favor of Obama were definitely, definitely happy. Um, and it, it was a bigger topic of discussion than I expected it to be. Uh, in the first place, like I didn't, I, I guess I didn't really realize how uh, how much the U.S. influenced other countries. I mean, of course I knew, but just not to the extent until I came over here. But a lot of people responded really, really well. Um, I don't really even think that there was any negative backlash, at least not not that I saw. So, but yeah, a majority of the people who I came in contact with were were happy. It's funny because I think. A lot of us in America were more disappointed with the whole election than the rest of the world is. Probably because we're stuck with the guy. Like, I don't feel that way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, more cyn- the more cynical ones, like me, I guess, were, were just like fed up with, with both of them. I mean, obviously, we thought Romney was just dangerous and not allowed. But, <laughs> but Obama wasn't like much bigger of a, of, of like a relief either because, you know... We were we were hoping for so much the first time around. I just don't see if he's gonna do it this time around. I don't get the feeling that that's the way. At least from what I've seen, and we're gonna post some sources up on the website, so definitely keep an eye out for those. Those of you who are listening to this, but um, according to opinion polls, a lot of people the world over, pretty much the entire world, were so excited that Obama was reelected. They did not want Romney in there. I mean, there was excitement here in the U.S., but I think sort of what Tariq is speaking to is that. The 2008 election was was very inspirational, and after it happened, there was this. Everyone was riding on this wave of inspiration. But I feel like the election was how long ago now? About a about a month, and it's sort of it's old news now. No one's really talking about it anymore. It's not. It wasn't as inspirational as his first election. Yeah, I think people were only excited because they were fucking scared that like Romney was going to be yeah. in the White House, and that's just that's just really frightening. Yeah, um, so back to what Amanda was saying about um, the election results being huge news everywhere else. Um, I found a poll that was done by the BBC um, that showed people around the world's opinions on Obama and Romney. And we are going to post the link to that poll so that you can see it, but um, seeing it is just astounding how heavily weighted toward Obama it is. Um, And also just how many people in general even have opinions on it. So in France, for instance, 72% of the people polled supported Obama, and only about 2% supported Romney, <laughs> which that was like, that was the biggest difference of any of the countries polled, but that's still amazing. And it's also amazing that 70, what, 74% of the people even have an opinion? Yeah. Like, if you asked Americans if they preferred Sarkozy or Hollande, no one would care. No one would know. No one would they know. Would that's right. No one would know. Yeah. Actually, Howard, I wanted to ask you, since you are in London, have you made it a point to venture outside of the UK? Have you gone to France at all over, like, a weekend or something? Yeah, I went to uh, to Paris for, like, four days. Nice, nice. How was it? Yeah. It was awesome, man. I, I think that's that's my favorite city to date. <laughs> wow. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, <laughs> yeah. so when, I, I had a great time. When you were mentioning, you said it's a topic of conversation over there, at least American politics. Now, were you, were you speaking for the American students that you're with, or do you find with your conversations with uh, natives, that makes them sound like, with the natives, um, <laughs> um, American politics come up? Was it a headline in yeah, England? Yeah. De- definitely, definitely. Um, which is what I didn't expect. So, 
you know, to just to go into depth on that, um, of course, there was a topic of conversation among students, um, you know, people exchanging views and, you know, who they think is going to eventually win and, you know, where they think the country is going to move forward after the election and so on. Um, but what I didn't expect was, you know, Greg's, uh, as, as you mentioned, like the, the quote unquote, the natives, quote unquote, um, or like, you know, the Londoners, like I didn't really expect for it to be a headline like it was. Um, it was all over the news. Uh, and even, I mean, this, this is unrelated, but even to like Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Sandy happened, you know, like I think last month or in October, I forget when, and that was a big thing too. So I didn't really expect for, um, for just some, some events in the U S to, to be as big of a headline as they were over here. But, um, yeah, I definitely, uh, got into discussion with some Londoners over here about the election and what they thought and who they thought was going to win. Uh, to be honest, everybody who I discussed the election with was in favor of, of Obama. Um, but it was just interesting, like hearing the, the different viewpoints and, and understanding like how much they know, even though they don't live in the States. So um, here in the United States, most of the political discourse is based around the economy, just because I guess that's maybe the issue that uh, most broadly affects most people. Did you find that most people in Europe were also talking about the economy, or were they more focused on things like international affairs and social rights? Um, I felt like the economy was, was the main focus. Um, with this one uh, lady I was talking to in particular, she was a friend of my aunt. And um, when she asked who I thought was going to win, um, and I told her, you know, I thought Obama was going to win, and she was talking about the economy and um, how she she didn't really think that it was in the best of shape uh, as it is right now, which which I agree in. But at the same time, I was explaining to her, well, you know, you have to look at it in comparison to 2008 when we came in, and you know, so on and so forth. Um, I feel like when the election was brought up over here, uh, and both presidential candidates, you know, Obama and Romney, the very first thing that came to uh, that came to mind was was the economy as opposed to anything else, definitely. Now, how in, how informed are people over there uh, in regards to American politics? Like when I see these these statistics that Will brought up, I, I think maybe there that maybe so many people support Obama because he was the president for the last four years, and they just do not know who Mitt Romney is because he doesn't get the right. type of press over there. But it, right. even yourself, you voted, right? You voted absentee or whatever. You yeah, did. I did. So Put right in the spot. <laughs> so, so how did you, how did you get informed in regards to everything that you needed to to make an accurate vote? Um, pretty much uh, online, to be honest. Um, I wish I could have spent more time actually, uh, like watching the, the the news over here to see like how. Uh, how they portrayed the information that was in the States. I did, I did get a chance to um, watch it sometimes, you know, like I would just make an effort to, to uh, sit down and watch the news, see how it compares to like, you know, the CNNs and the ABCs and the Foxes over in the States um, and see what they're saying about, uh, about the politics in the States and how they're saying it. But um, I didn't get to do it as much as I planned to. So majority of the information that I received was online, you know, how to, uh, First of all, how the whole absentee ballot thing worked, and then um, just the information behind each campaign. You know, who was uh, planning what, and what policies they were trying to be implemented, and so on and so forth. Um, obviously, social networks like Facebook helped. Um, so yeah, it, it, a lot of my uh, sources and my knowledge came from online, actually. How how concerned were the the Europeans about Romney's religion, like his Mormonism? How much of that factored into their concerns with him, or was it more like this guy's just playing the Republican agenda and that's scary on its own? Um, it was a little bit of both. I I think that when his religion was uh, was talked about and was, was brought into play, um, people almost scoffed at it. You know, like they, they, <laughs> no, I know I didn't did. get a very pleasant response over here at all. I feel like, um, and like, like I said, you know, this is all from from discussions. But I've had people who I've encountered and so on and so forth. You might ask somebody else, and they'll tell you something different. But um, I feel like he wasn't really responded to very well. And in terms of his uh, his faith or religion or uh, whatever, um, 
Yeah, I feel like they were just very confused almost um, and sort of taken aback, like not really didn't stand behind him on that in, in terms of that aspect. Uh, and then in, in terms of him, you know, being Republican, like it, I think that because his policies and so forth uh, were so different from Obama's and they were pleased with how Obama was running the country for the last four years, like they just weren't willing to give him a chance at all, you know? Uh huh. And, you, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I don't think it's terribly surprising that people maybe aren't that welcoming of Romney's religion. He, he is Mormon um, with the mainstream LDS church, but you know, people have to remember that the LDS church is, it started as an American religion. It's really only become global in the last couple of decades, and even still, it's thought of as an American religion. It did start here, and like most other churches that started, at least Christian churches, most of them started in Europe. So. Yeah, and I think the other thing is that um, he is Mormon, and that is an American religion, but Mm -hmm. also most of Europe is kind of in a post-Christian phase now. Like, I think about 10% of the Scandinavian countries are still theist. Like, it's just an outrageous change. If I were European, I think I would just be confused at how much religion played into this election. Right. This is just not even an issue over there. Mm -hmm. So... I, I was actually curious, you know, you're in the UK, you're in London. I know there's a very strong Muslim minority growing in Europe, especially in London and even in places like, like France. The, how, what is the opinion? Oh, no. Uh, what, what? Howard's not actually being eaten by a lion. I know it sounds like that. We're just, every now and then there's a few technical difficulties. So here with us. <laughs> yeah, so, Howard, I was just asking you, what did the minorities in Europe think, or was it pretty much the same as everyone else? Um, in regards to the election? Yeah. Um, hmm. I think that, in terms of minority beliefs, yeah, they were on a pretty much, pretty much on a level, level playing field, um, in in terms of like you know we discussed earlier like a few minutes ago the how Romney was responded over here and uh, how um, people were elated when Obama won and I feel like that for the most part um, was the norm and uh, of course you know here and there you had people who still weren't really pleased um, but I feel like when people think of or when people thought of who who was in their best interest to, to win the election, you know, obviously they thought about what that would do for the UK and what what that would do for uh, England. And so they really took it to heart when it came down to who was going to win the election, you know, um, how, how they got, well, not exactly how they got involved, but, you know, their thoughts on it. They really took a stand. And so I feel like because they felt so invested in how it could affect England um, and the UK as a whole, a lot of people really uh, stood behind behind Obama, especially with the reputation that he's built throughout his presidency um, with relations here. What do you think um, specifically it was about Romney's policies that people objected to? Like, why didn't they like him? Man, good question. Um, hmm. I think that a lot of people viewed Romney as just very radical in, um, in some of his policies. Um, and I don't think a lot of people were in favor of how he didn't appeal to the middle class like Obama uh, did and, and does. You know, I, I think that that's where a lot of people, you know, we mentioned the economy and how people felt about that. I feel like a lot of people really um, want someone who stands behind the middle class and is and, and focuses sort of on like the, the average person you know, as opposed to the wealthier population of the country. Mm-hmm. And I think that when it came down to um, standing behind, you know, uh, socioeconomic status or groups of people economically, uh, Obama appealed to, appealed to the middle class much more than, than Romney did. Mm-hmm. Um, and so because of that, I feel like they were really, uh, they were a lot more comfortable with Obama, um, seeing what he's done, and they didn't like where Romney, where Romney was headed. Uh, I feel like also that Obama was a lot more vocal in, well, not 
yeah, a, 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 I, could, I guess I could say that a lot more vocal in um, his plans. Mm-hmm. Like he's very thorough, and Romney wasn't as thorough. So you know, maybe they had some questions that were left unanswered, and so on. You know, but I, I do think that one of the main things was the whole middle class uh, appeal in the Indian economy. You know, there was some talk. I noticed several articles um, during the election about you know, the global market, the global economy, and especially relations between the United States and China right now. Um, And, I mean, Romney is traditionally a businessman. Unlike Obama, he was not a lawyer. That wasn't what he did. Um, But I know a lot of people were very concerned, at least domestically, were concerned about how Romney being president would affect our relations with China in terms of, like, outsourcing and the industry. Did you hear anything about that there? Um, not, to be honest, not, not a whole lot. You mean, like, his, his relationship with China? Mm-hmm. Um, not too much, at least when I was speaking to people. It was, it was more on just, uh, direct relations between, like, you know, UK and, and US, or, um, even, like, what he's done for the, for the US thus far, mm-hmm. you know, because sometimes I'm, I didn't get the chance to, uh, I didn't really get a chance to, to delve into what he's done over here or like how he's impacted over here so as, as much as I spoke about how he's impacted the U.S. in his presidency. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like that, a lot of times when I was talking to people, that was the main focus as opposed to international relations. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'd be, I'd be very interested to hear um, what the atmosphere is right now. I know uh, it's not really about the elections, but... The, England and France have recently threatened to withdraw their ambassador to Israel over the whole um, Gaza situation, specifically when Israel said they're going to start 3,000 more settlements. Have people been talking about that at all, just to get some international conversation going? Um, there has been some discussion about it. Um, uh, I'm trying to think if I've spoken to anybody about that who's really had... Well, what was the overall um, reaction to the Gaza conflict, for example? Because I know it has a lot to do with wait, Israel. can and... I insert something? Yeah, here? go for it. Um, Netanyahu's threat to start 3,000 more settlements in the West Bank, east of Jerusalem, was not actually because of the Gaza conflict. It was because of Palestine's um, successful, yes. like, non-member observer status in the yeah. EU. Okay. Uh, good, good clarification. Sorry, there. Yeah, and let me <laughs> point out right now, as long as we're talking about Israel, that Israel was one of the few countries, and when I say few, I do mean two or three countries that did support Romney during the election. Everybody else was behind Obama. Yeah. Netanyahu and Romney, I think, were actually childhood friends, so that's no. part of it. So, yeah. <laughs> that's so scary. <laughs> yeah, isn't that terrifying? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, wow. <laughs> But how, any thoughts on that? Uh, what were the what were the perspectives on that? Uh, on all of those crises? Over oh, um, yeah. Sorry, I I think that a lot of people were are, are frightened. To be honest, um, you know, it, it's it's been hectic. Um, and when I say you know, it, I mean everything that's going on over there. But obviously, it transcends uh, internationally. And so a lot of people have been like you know, sort of find as to where where that's going to go necessarily, um, how that's going to develop over, you know, in the, in the coming months, in the coming years, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, you know, some some confusion, some uh, just frightened, you know, thoughts and so on. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's been definitely something that has people a little uh, ruffled, to say the least. I think sort of stepping back, what are the main differences that you've noticed between British politics and American politics? I think that that's a really, really good question. Um, between British politics and American politics. It's more fun over there is what I hear. <laughs> Everyone yelling at each other in Parliament. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I just think that like as a whole, uh, the states are a lot more politically correct and like, you know, Politics over there are, I don't want to say a lot more defined, but, um... I think that's a great, I I would say that's a great way of putting it. I, you know, I've talked to uh, someone else who was in the London program before, and the way she put it was, uh, the spectrum of American politics is very narrow, so we think that we have a left and a right, but really our left and right 
is just completely center so compared to European politics. Center and a right, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and where like their spectrum is much bigger, so you have far more left leaning and far more right leaning people in Europe than you do here. Absolutely, I think that that's a great way of putting it. To be honest, yeah. I think that part of that also is um, the fact that in the United States we only really have two political parties, whereas mm -hmm. in every country in Europe they have especially with the parliament no less than five. Yeah, like in Denmark, which is one of the countries that I've studied more politically, they have around 11 political parties that are in the um, their equivalent of Congress, yeah, always. It's, it's rare for the U.S. to have even a third party, and historically that's only happened when people are really unhappy with the primary two, and then eventually they go, the third one goes away. Yeah, right now I think what we have two or three independent senators, Bernie Sanders from yeah, Vermont, and then... He's yeah, awesome. Yeah, Bernie Sanders is great. So do people sort of scoff at uh, the, the way our two parties bicker? I mean, everyone's parties are bickering over there. You have a lot more people fighting, but is, is the, do, do our politics almost seem ridiculous over there when um, you come back? In, in, in a way, yeah, and it's, it's funny, man. You don't really, re like, I, you know, I, I think I stated earlier, you don't really realize, like, <laughs> how, like, you, your, your, your viewpoints change mm -hmm. on what happens back home when you come abroad. And I think that that happened for me over here. So even I, like, you know, I had to take a step back and be like, man, like, <laughs> politics of the U.S. can be ridiculous. But um, I, I do think that sometimes people people scoff at it just because, just because of all the disagreements and not even so much disagreements because, you know, people are obviously going to disagree in politics. People are going to bicker, bicker and argue and fight. But it's, it's how there's such a a struggle to resolve these these uh these differences that really makes people like be like wow man like it shouldn't be like that you know um i do think that over here uh yeah like it it's it can almost be pitied sometimes like yeah like in terms of in terms of uh, how democrats and republicans sometimes you know bicker all the time but um yeah, in a, in a way, it's it's got that, I'd say so, yeah. So, do people have faith in American politics over there? Or, no. Or are they just letting us do whatever we do here and crossing their fingers? <laughs> um, you, you have some, you have some who, <laughs> who are definitely uh, standing, standing behind us, rooting for us, but at the same time, like, you have other people as well who are just like, man, wherever it goes, <laughs> I just hope know. that you know, yeah, we're, we're on the upside. Um, we're down the upside, rather. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, pe people are um, invested in in how the the U.S. politics affects over here. Um, but at the same time, you know, given the same token, um, it, sometimes they just, hey, they just let, let it flow, to be honest. Um, I probably can't speak as fluidly on this as you can because you're actually in Europe right now, but I was reading um, an article in a Danish newspaper translated into <laughs> English. I'm not that special. Um, but <laughs> the main point of the article was that um, if Romney had won, it would have been a huge ideological blow to the economic policies that dominate Europe right now because there's that dichotomy between... Um, like American conservative values, you know, philosophers like Friedrich Hayek, um, the policies of Ronald Reagan, the after effects of that, and then the more like Keynesian, liberal, um, progressive views of Europe and Obama. Um, so it, the United States is one of the largest economies in the world, and if we had decided those Keynesian policies had failed, I think Europe would have taken that as a huge blow, especially with the economic problems that they're facing right now. I think it would have been a suggestion to them that the routes that they're taking would be ineffective and just couldn't change anything. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, I think that if Ron won, um, not only would people have been displeased, um, or you know the greater population, I guess. Um, but yeah, there, I mean, definitely this would have been some concerns, you know, economically as to where uh, not only our country was going to go, but, you know, how that would roll over into the, into the UK. Hey, so um, 
you know, we're, we're sort of approaching the end of our time, so I think, you know, it would behoove all of us to really hear just your thoughts generally on the London program just a little bit. Let us know yeah. how you can think ask, about can that. Can I ask one more question now really quick before we oh, wrap yeah. up? Go for um, it. I know we talked a lot about the economy and how that's affected, how people feel about that, but I'm curious about some of the other finer points of the election. You know, I know over here, I mean, people talked constantly about, you know, Obama and Romney's differing opinions on, say, abortion and gay rights. Do people have really strong opinions one way or the other on that over there, or is it is it similarly divided? Um, I think that, let me, sorry, let me dwell on that for just a couple seconds. Um, yeah. Yeah, sure. Wait, actually, in the meantime, I can speak a little bit on this. This is from the same Danish newspaper article that I was reading. Uh -huh. um, it was commenting on just how absurd it is that those are factors in our elections. Um, because for most people in Europe, those are just personal rights, and it's nothing that they think about. Like, gay marriage is fine. Um, you can have an abortion if you want. It's just more down to personal choice. And the fact that Romney was campaigning so hard on personal choices, I think, just was a huge turnoff to them about him, so. Would you agree with that, Howard? Um, yeah, actually, I'd, I'd, I'd say that's pretty accurate. Um, I think that in the States, you know, it's, it's like something that's always, uh, always a discussion, you know, abortion, um, gay marriage, you know, so on and so forth, those really sensitive uh, topics that apply to a lot of people. And, um, it's something that is 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 more of a, a big deal to us than it is to them, you know, than it is to the Londoners and you know the the people in the UK and in, in Europe. Period. Um, so I feel like there wasn't as much of a focus on it over here. There wasn't as much of a you know, like a, a discussion about it. People were much more um, interested in how in, in the, the the more of the global topics. Um, but. Yeah, and I, and I feel that's just because, you know, it's something that, like, it's scoped in on in America a lot. You know, it's really focused you know, on the, in the States. Mm -hmm. Probably yeah. just because it's part of our, like, you know, I could talk all day about this because I, I took a class on, like, just America and, and our narrative, but we have this Calvinist narrative where there's a certain set of characteristics that indicate that you're chosen and everyone wants to be chosen and if you've read Max Weber this is the same thing that translated into our idea of capitalism mm -hmm. so for some reason mm -hmm. the social values and your personal beliefs that would have gotten you saved and sent to heaven now translate over to just how you should be in general but anyways American America needs to figure out a few things before we're on the same page with the rest of the world oh my gosh it makes <laughs> I mean, my head spin that's interesting too because uh, when you comment earlier, Will, you made it seem like America, we're setting the trends politically. Well, it's, we are, but that's just because we're so powerful. Like, Are we setting the, the trends politically or economically? I think it's just economic. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it, it's all interrelated, but I mean, in terms of progression, like, we're, we're not... Not, we're not a leader. Like we're yeah, we're not very yeah. progressive at all. But then again, we're coming from, we're all liberal bio, uh, college students, you know. We, we, we think no, I mean, we are liberal college students further. in the context of America, but we're not in the global spectrum. Like, yeah. people in other countries are just more progressive than Americans, at least in a lot of the Western nations. No, it definitely seems like that. Like, the fact that those things are seen as personal choices, which, I mean, that's, that's a common, that's just the mindset, like you said, in, in Europe. Here, that's a liberal point of view that the Democrats hold. That's not something the Republicans think about. No. I mean, I think that, for, this is what I'm taking away from it. I think that it sounds like um, we're not necessarily progressive politically, but we still hold purse strings, so to speak. And that's why, even though Europe might, might probably see us as antiquated, they still don't care so much. I'm frowning. I'm frowning at America right now. <laughs> he is actually frowning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like, like Tarif had asked, you want to explain or elaborate a little bit about the London program for anybody who's interested? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. It's uh, it's an awesome, awesome program. It's an awesome experience. Like, um, there is the London internship program where you uh, get to come over here, and half of the semester you do, um, you just take regular classes. And then that, I think that's from, well, for this semester, since it's the fall, it was from September, the first week of September, I think like the fourth, until October 17th. Um, and then, you know, you get a mid-semester break, and then after that is when your internship period starts. So you're working from 
midway October until literally uh, internship program students just got off uh, their internships last week. Mm. So it, it's, a, it's an awesome experience for them. And then there's a history and literature program um, that I'm on. And that's just, that's class the entire time. Mm. <laughs> but but it's, it's good though. It's, it's still um, definitely a way to, to advance your, um, not only like literature skills, but your close analysis uh, readings and um, just the way the way you write period. It's done a lot for me over here to be honest. So I think both programs are really well. I probably sound like, you know, a real <laughs> BU student right now, but I think that they're great. Yeah. Hey, I mean BU bought up <laughs> pretty much a lot of South Kensington to put you guys there, so I hope it is a good program. Oh yeah, man. South, South, Kensington, South Kensington, Kensington for those who aren't familiar with London is very much a high transit yeah, area. Yeah. It's like a good place to be. Ooh. Be you put a lot no uh, for the folks that aren't familiar with London like Kensington South Kensington area is very expensive too so like BU did a good job oh yeah absolutely like Kensington is definitely the uh, the wealthiest uh, part of London and like I think mean, the country actually um, <laughs> BU funding <laughs> <laughs> that's where our tuition's going <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> exactly but um but yeah though no, it, it they they did take care of us when they send us here, I tell you that. <laughs> I, uh, you know, Will and I are both sophomores. We're both, you know, looking to study abroad right now. I know I am. I'm, I'm yeah, taking notes. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us, Howard. We're sorry we had technical difficulties, but yeah, I think I your insight was really valuable. Yeah, we loved having you on. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest no, of thank you. Guys, this, this was great. I'm, I'm really, really glad I got to call it. Yeah, and uh, Will, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, of course. Great time with you too. We had a great guest today, guys. We did. Uh, we had a fun yeah. time. I'm honored. Really interesting conversation. Yeah. For yeah. those of you listening, I'm blushing. He is. <laughs> he's he's, he's quite red. We have blushing. There's a lot of emotions. In <laughs> lions roaring occasionally. Yeah. Our guy's like mauled six times. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for taking Can't the time. Can't we all just get along? I know, right? <laughs> Well, thank you guys for listening in. Y'all know that this is the Common Thread, the official podcast of the Howard Thurman Center. I'm Amanda Dowd. I'm Greg Wilson. I'm Tarif Ahmed. And we'll see you next